Hi, today we're going to make some uh, bypass dongles that you can use while troubleshooting your customers' uh, washing machines and dryers. So uh, stay tuned. Okay, today we're going to be talking about uh, making bypasses for washing machines and dryers for the service technician to use uh, on a call. Uh, a lot of times you have to go and, and check a machine and you need to be able to bypass the safety features to make motors run or, or lights come on or, or whatnot. But, uh, first we'll go over uh, some typical things you'll find. Like, let's first go over the, the dryers. This is an older style switch with a with the flapper that, go, that that the door would activate when it's closed and it it makes a connection between these two wires here. Now this plugs into the male counterpart of your dryer. Um, it's in the uh, upper right hand corner of most dryers. This is not to be used you know to uh, override safety features that uh, should be in place for the consumer, but uh, service technicians need to override these safety features sometimes to make motors operate or, or, or test the uh, machine sy uh, s systems. First we'll go over the dryer motor, I mean the dryer uh, door switch. Door switch comes, uh, there's all kinds of varieties of door switches. These are the most common. It has a, a little flapper on it that the door actuates when it's closed to uh, connect these two wires and these two, if these two wires are not connected, then the, the the dryer won't operate. So it has a common plug with a a point at one end and a flat spot on the other that fits into the the dryer side of, of the uh, of the machine. You can see these are the two common ones that you'll you'll see. They look they look similar. This one has an extra wire on it. This is for the uh, the light. And if you look at the plug, you'll see the light um, part of it goes in the center of this uh, this plug. So, but you rarely need a you really rarely need to uh, connect that. But if you do, you could, what you would do is uh, connect all three of these wires together, and we'll be doing that here in a minute. But if you uh, if you get confused, just remember. The two outer terminals on dryers are what uh, on dryer of this type is what what connects the uh, machine and makes it makes it run. Next, we have uh, uh, the old style washing machine uh, lid switches. Uh, here's a, here's one that's typical, and it goes it goes out. It has a uh, a plug on it like this and the the washer side of this plug fits in like this this will come up through the the, the uh, cabinet itself and when you disassemble the machine you unplug it from the washer side of it and this stays with the cabinet uh, it's common for these to to go out this one this is a good one you can hear the micro switch clicking in there here's another common type it uh, has an, uh, a rod that, on the lid that comes down and fits in this slot here and moves this, this pin. And this one's bad, so we're going to make a switch out of it. Let me see if i got a good one here. Yeah, you hear the micro switch. The pin fits down in this slot right here and actuates the micro, micro switch micro switch. And here's another common type. This fits underneath the, the lid and a pin comes down and pushes this lever like this. And it actuates a micro switch that connects these two wires. So, and there's two types of these. There's the large type and there's a small type. So, we need to make a what I like to do is take these and make one bypass out of two switches so that depending on what type of machine I have when I go to a customer's house, I can use one end of this or the other to make the connection. 
<coughs> okay, let's start with uh, uh, a dryer bypass. What you need for the dryer bypass is you need this piece right here. And what you will do is just you cut it off the defective end of, of this. And this is about as much as a couple inches. What I like to use are these uh, these splicers here. I get them at Harbor, Harbor Freight. And they're really neat to use because uh, you can just clip the ends of the wire off. When it has a butt in it, you can put both wires in these, turn them both in the holes there. <coughs> they butt down, take a pair of pliers, and you see this metal part. And when you push it together, this middle piece connects the two wires across the bridge here and you can just close that gap. You have nothing showing and then you have a bypass plug just like that. And uh, you put that in your toolbox and next time you need to bypass a, a dryer uh, door switch, that's what you would use. Okay, um, next thing is uh, the washing machine switches. These uh, switches like this, they go up in the top left corner of the cabinet and the washing machine side has a connector, a black connector like this and it fits into the into the switch like this. So what, usually if you're going to bypass this you would you would pull this switch and the two wires on, on that side you need to connect. So I've seen customers that have cut these two wires. They're either gray or white or whatever. This always green is the ground. And they would cut these two wires off, splice them on the washing machine side, and they bypass this safety switch here. Uh, for the, for the uh, service technician, you need... You may go to a customer's house and say, well, my machine's not spinning the water out. It's not, it just stops in the spin cycle. And uh, I, I can't do anything. It won't do a thing. Uh, so a lot of times it's the, it's the lid switch. It's this, this contraption right here. So what, you, what I do is uh, I can take one of these and, and take it to the table saw. Not the table saw, but the band saw. And I saw this plastic piece off right here. And you can see it here. So it looks like this. And once you do that, this thing will open. It's got little snaps on the side of it. And you open it up. This one is full of trash. And you have these, these pieces here. And you can look this is this is the ground on the outside and you can just get rid of that but what you would want to do and this one fell out so let me put it back in here what you would want to do is connect these two terminals on the inside so what I do I get my trusty old soldering gun. See if you can see down in here. There's a set of points down in there. You can see those points. I like to take and put a drop of solder to make those points connect. So you can see what I'm doing here and you can reach down in there and put a drop of solder right on those points Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
problems. You can see down in there, but that that solder has got those points together. So now this terminal and this terminal are connected, and when you plug plug it into a wash wash machine dongle, these two these two leads are going to be connected, and the ground will be missing. So. <coughs> just put this back together like so it snaps back together and you put this in your toolbox and you have a handy bypass that you plug into the customer's machine to test his old uh, lid switch so now we want to use these these lid switches And they have two different sizes. They have this size and they have this size. And what we're going to do is make an end to end piece like this so that we just have to carry one uh, dongle with us in, in our toolbox. I have an old one that an old man made for me years ago. And uh, it's, it's nasty looking, but it, it's functional. And we're going to make a, a, a better one today. So first we're going to need two old lid switches with the plugs on the end of it. And we need to cut them. Let's cut them all oh, about two or three inches. And we won't be needing the ground wire. So you can you can just go ahead and cut the ground wires close to the, the plug. And now the thing is we want to hook these two together and these two together. So what we'll do, we'll just hook all four of them together to make one plug. And you can make them as close or as far apart as you, you want to. Um, I'll cut this one the same size as this. Okay, let's do it this way. Now we have our two pieces. And what we're going to do is use an inline splicer to connect all four of those wires. And just to make it look pretty, let me take a piece of heat shrink and put it the, on there too. This will be the right size. So the first thing we need to do is strip our wires back. My favorite stripper. Now, we need to connect these two ends. And connect these two ends. And let's see. Piece of heat shrink about this long. First we'll connect this one. And I'm just going to use a pair of pliers. Because I hate those crimpers. Nope, nope. A little more. Good deal. Heat shrink on. I know where it is. Good 
steel. Okay, sometimes you're going to find a switch similar to this one for a door switch on a dryer. Then you'll have to connect this lead and this lead. Well, they will have spade plugs on them, similar to spade plugs like this that, that fit on here to here. So, what I do is I get some male spade plugs and I make a take a wire and connect them like this that way you it substitutes for having that switch and it's just a jumper wire with, with male spade plugs on the end of it <clears throat> and I made this one this one I can use for two different types if, if you have the males the male plugs like this that come from the dryer very rare to see that or the male on this side so they're connected four wires together right here so that they this is the jumper and this is the jumper so <clears throat> what we have now is we have um, we've got a washing machine a lid switch uh, bypass switch and we have a, a double-ended bypass switch for the large size and the small size. We have a dryer bypass uh, dongle and we have another dryer bypass dongle. And there you have it. Hope you enjoyed it. Catch you on the next one.